Looking at Rogue. All right, Bobolos Rex here, and we're taking a look at the Rogue talents. So let's start by getting this tier. All right. This is cool that they're letting us just buy tier. I gotta say it every time. It's fucking sweet. It sucks that it's only on this server though. All right. So let's look at it live. Look at that. I'm a little Volpera. Rogue. I'm gonna stab. I like the rogue tier. I actually like the rogue tier, so let's look at it. Like I do. Alright, so we got LFR. Oh, you know what? They fix I think they fixed the legs. Or the legs had that weird thing on it. I like the coloring. I'm starting to like the coloring of LFR, at least on Rogue. I like the rogue set a lot. I like how you got the hood, you got the spooky eyes. Like the elemental aesthetic, you know, may work for some, it may not work for some people, but it works for me. Uh, the blue, the blue looks good. And then we got the purple. Yeah, LFR is green. Purple is my favorite color, so I love the purple sets. And it kind of matches this Volpera's fur. That's cool. I do like that. And then you got the normal Gladiator, which is this deep purple, which is pretty sick for Rogue. And the Elite Gladiator is supposed to be red, but I don't see it here. And then you got leather, uh, this is like the war mode, world drop, PvP, crafted stuff, is what it says. And this is just leather, it's not like specific to rogue. Then you got the, the citizen, and then you got the world quest, renown, leather. This looks cool, I like the leather. I like that, dude. The leather cell is good. I haven't been vibing with the mail, but the leather looks pretty sick. Alright, so I haven't played Rogue in a while, but it was my main for a long time, but it was Outlaw. So how are we going to do this? Alright, so we're j we'll go Assassination Subtlety Outlaw, and I'm just going to be reading through, and uh, so we're going to start with Assassination, so let's look at the tier, and then I'll d figure out what kind of builds. So we got two set and venom also increase your weapons poison damage by 10%. Then you get the four set when your weapon poison deals direct damage you have a 15 50% chance to gain septic wounds increasing all bleed damage done by 2% for 8 seconds. All right. So you want poison and bleeds. All right. I I feel like that's pretty generic but we'll we'll see how I spec it. But let's get started on the main rogue class tree here. All right, we got Shiv automatic for assassination. Attack an enemy with your offhand, dealing physical damage, dispelling all enrage effects, and applying a concentrated form of your non-lethal poison. Dude, I'm glad that this is automatic. So you can, for assassination rogue, if you have an assassination rogue, you're like, dispel. Dispel this in rage right now. No excuse. But you get an outlaw or a sub rogue. I didn't spec it. Sorry, I didn't spec Shiv. Too bad. Then we got blind. Blind to target, causing it to wander, wander for one minute. Damage will interrupt the effect. Two minute cooldown. And we got sap. You got a talent into sap. That's going to be fun. Incapacitate a target, not in combat for one minute. Only works on humanoids, beasts, demons, dragon kin. Damage will revive the target. Alright. If you know Rogue, then you know those. Alright, you got Row 2 over here. Evasion. Increases your dodge by 100% for 10 seconds. I guess we're taking that. We might as well. We got Fane. Perform an evasive maneuver. Reducing damage taken from area effects by 40%. We'll see about that. 
And then Cloak of Shadows 2 minute cooldown provides magic immunity instantly removing all harmful spell effects. The Cloak lingers causing you to resist harmful spells for 5 seconds. Alright. We may get some of this stuff. I gotta choose. I'm, I'm I'm thinking about damage. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm a rogue. All I care about is my damage. That's what I'm specking. Master Poisoner. Increases non-damaging effects of your weapon's poison by 20%. Non-damaging? Okay. Alright, and we got a choice note here. Numbing Poison. Coach your weapon with non-lethal lethal poison. They'll last for an hour. Each strike has a 30%. Chance of poisoning the enemy, clouding their mind, slowing their attack and casting speed by 15 15%. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But it's not damage. And then we got Antropic Poison. Coach your weapon with non-lethal poison that lasts for one hour. Each strike has a 30% of poisoning the enemy, reducing their damage by 3% for 10 seconds. That's the one that everyone's talking about. So this is weakness, but this is like Devo Aura for rogues. Alright, and we got Nimble Fingers. Energy costs of Fane and Crimson Vial reduced by 10. Okay. Got Gouge. Gouge the eyes of the enemy target, incapacitating them for 4 seconds. Damage will interrupt the effect. Must be in front of your target. Alright, and we got Blackjack. Oh my god, is there is there a talent called Hookers? And then Bender Bender can do his full talent. Enemies have a 30% reduced damage in healing for 6 seconds after blind or sap effects on them ends. Alright, if you know that reference then you know. If you don't, then you don't. Alright. Eh, I don't know if I need that. There's tricks. Tricks of the trade redirect all threat you cause to a targeted party or raid member. Beginning with your next damaging attack within the next 30 seconds. So it's it's rogue misdirect, if you don't know. Now you know. You got Shadow Runner. While stealth or shadow dance is active, you move 20% faster. Alright. Uh, let's get this. And then... I want access to that. So let's get... Alright. There we go. There we go. I got all of my utility. They forced my hand. Rogue's got a lot of talents, like, right here, dude. That's fucking wild. Just, like, two rows, two ta full talent rows, like, which do you choose? Alright, now we're on row four. Wound, improved wound poison. Wound poison can now stack up to two additional times. Alright. Fleet footed movement speed increased by 50%. I like that. Iron stomach increases the healing you receive from Crimson Vial, healing potions, and health stones by 25%. Okay. Improved sprint reduces the cooldown of sprint by 60 seconds. What is it normally? Two minutes. Alright. Prey on the weak. Enemies disabled by your cheap shot or kidney shot take 10% increased damage from all sources for 6%. By 4 6 seconds. I don't know why by six, I was saying something else. Shadow Step. Okay. All the rogue specs can get if they want. Step through the shadows to appear behind your target and gain 70% increased movement speed for 2 seconds. If you already know Shadow Step, gain 1 additional charge of Shadow Step. And it doesn't say stealth, so you can just use this. That's cool. Subterfuge. Your abilities requiring stealth can still be used 3 seconds after stealth breaks. Alright. Alright, we're moving down into row 5. Yeah. Virulent poisons increases the damage of your weapon poisons by 10%. All right. Dead in nerves. Physical damage taken reduced by 3%. All right. And we got a choice node right here in the middle. Oh, wait. Let me fix this before it becomes a problem. There we go. There we go. I caught that beforehand. Um, choice node. Elusiveness. Evasion also reduces damage taken by 10%. And Fane also reduces non-area effect damage by taken by 20%. Okay. Or cheat death, fatal attack, and of reduces you to 7% of your max health. For 3 seconds afterwards, you take 85% reduced damage. Cannot trigger more often than once per 6 minutes. Alright. Rush setup. The energy cost of cheap shot, kidney shot, sap, and distract are reduced by 20%. 
Tight spender. Energy cost of finishing moves reduced by 10%. Okay, so I gotta get that. So let's get a shadow step and then. Alright. We're on row 6. Deadly precision. Increases the crit strike chance of your attacks to generate combo points by 5%. Okay. Thief's versatility. Versatility increased by 2%. Okay. I take that. Night Stalker. Why stealth is active? Your abilities deal 4% more damage. Okay. Alright, I don't know if I need that actually for assassination. Alright, yeah, I don't think. I'm what? What? Interesting. Do you play Shadow Dance Assassination? I can't, I can't begin to know what the tuning is going to be like, so I'm literally just making a build that I think feels cool, FYI. When, when you, if you're watching this in the YouTube video. But this is cool. Okay, so we can get Vigor, Acrobatic Strikes. Damn, dude, I can get it all. We can get it all. All right. And we'll get Improved Sprint. I don't need Gouge. Gouge is so niche. It's good when you, it's good when it's needed, but it's so niche. It's such a PvP thing. I mean, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Oh, I tested. You keep all of your talents in Mage Tower. If you if you want to do Mage Tower, you keep your talents. I've tested this on the beta. Currently, you keep all the talents you have. You don't lose any. You do get scaled down, but you don't lose any talents. It's fucking sweet. All right. We're in row 8. Adds leeching effect to your lethal poison, granting you 10% leech. That's nice. Lethality. Critical strike chance increased by 1%. One, increased by 1 crit strike damage bonus of your attacks to generate combo points increased by 10%. You can play around with talents on the PTR right now if you want to do it beforehand. If you don't have beta. Alright, so we're going to get Lethality. Recuperator! Slice and Dice heals you for up to 1% of your maximum health for 2 seconds. That could be great for... Um, Outlaw, for sure. Alacrity, your finishing moves have a 5% chance per combo point to grant you 1% haste for 15 seconds. Second up to 5 times, of course. And then Soothing Darkness, you are healed for 30% of your maximum health over 6 seconds after gaining Vanish or Shadow Dance. Alright? Row 9. Dude, rogue talent tr tr talent trees stacked, dude, it feels. Alright, seal fate. What is that person doing? That looks cool. Okay, I'm distracted. Seal fate. When you critical strike with a melee attack that generates combo points, you have a 50% chance to gain an additional combo point per critical strike. Alright, this thing is distracting me. I gotta move. Can you stop, bro? Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, live is more important, for sure. Okay, I had to get away from that dude. That was distracting me. I want to fly around like that. Alright, Seal Fate. When you critical strike with a melee attack, you generate combo points. That generates combo points. You have a 50% chance to get an additional combo point per critical strike. Okay. And I just have to get leeching for that. Okay. Cold Blood. Increase your critical strike chance of your next damage ability by 100%. Alright. Oh, this is the carrying ability. Echoing Reprimand. Deal arcane damage to an enemy, extracting their anima to anima charge a combo point for 45 seconds. Damaging finishing moves that consume the same number of combo points as your anima charge function as if they consume 7 points. That's pretty cool. Alright, then we got a choice note over here. Deeper stratagem, gain 1 additional max combo point. You f your finishing moves that consume more than 5 combo points have an increased effect and your finishing move deal 5% increased damage. Alright. More than have ink. Ooh. Oh. 
Okay. And then marked for death. Mark the target instantly generate five combo points. Cooldown resets if the target dies within one minute. All right, I'm gonna get that. And we got fine weakness. Your stealth ability reveals a flaw in your target's defenses, causing all your attacks to bypass 15% of the enemy's armor for 10 seconds. That's cool. So I guess you decide whether or not you go this stealth build. Right, two, 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 and then, or for the echoing. Interesting. Hmm. I'm gonna go with the echoing Rekber man. Alright. Have him charge three. We'll get leech. And we'll get that. Alright, I gotta get away from this dude. Why are they bothering me? I'm literally like as far away from the main area as I possibly can be. All right, I'm safe over here. All right, let's start looking in the assassination tree. I don't know what kind of build I'm gonna make. Remember that some of these will say extra stuff. For future talents. So if I repeat, that's why. Because technically I've already got a talent build, I just have it reset, so it's weird how it works. But let's look. Okay, first thing assassination gets deadly poison. Coat your weapon with the lethal poison in the last one hour. Each strike has a 30% chance to poison the enemy for nature damage over 12 seconds. So this sub sub why can't I say this word? Subsequent poison applications will instantly deal nature damage. Oh my god. Alright, row two. Improve shift. Shift now also increases your nature damage done against the target by 20% for 8 seconds. Okay, I, I want to focus on bleeds. I, got, I need poisons, but poisons trigger the bleed thing. Alright, Venomous Wounds. You gain 5 energy each time your garo, garo or Rupture deal bleed damage to a poison target. If the enemy dies while affected by your Rupture, we gain energy based on its duration. Alright. And we got another Shadow Step, so I can get another Shadow Step charge. It says 1 second cooldown. Is that the recharge rate, really? Interesting. Alright, we'll get it. I'll get two charges. Eh, yeah, that's the bleed side, so we'll get it. Alright. Bro 3. Invenom extends the duration of slice and dice by up to three seconds per combo point spent. Okay. That makes me want to get that. Elaborate planning. Your finishing moves grant 4% increased damage done for by for four seconds, okay. Improved poison increases the application chance uh, uh, of your poisons by 5%. Okay. Bloody mess, garrote, and rupture damage increased by 10%. All right. And then internal bleeding, kidney shot also deals up to 9k bleed damage over 6 seconds based on combo points spent. All right. Row 4 here. Throne Precision. Fan and Knives damage increased by 15% is a 5% increased crit strength. Uh, crit strike chance. Okay. So that's good for AoE. That's if you need AoE. Shiv has one additional charge. Okay. Fatal Concoction. Increase the damage of your weapon poison by 15%. Okay. Improved Goro. Goro deals 50% increased damage and has no cooldown when used from stealth or 3 seconds after breaking stealth. All right, all right, I'm changing this. I'm changing this. I'm changing. I'm changing. I'm changing. I'm changing. We are going the stealth way. We are going the stealth way. All right. Fixed. Fixed. Hmm. I don't really want to lose anything. Hmm. 
There we go. All right. Hold on. That, okay. All right. Wait a minute. Oh, and it has no cool, okay. Intent to kill, shadow steps cool down. Okay, I'm back over, I adjusted some stuff. You can see over here, I adjusted around for assassination now that I've read the assassination stuff. Intent to kill, shadow steps cool down is reduced by 33% when used on a target afflicted by your group. It's cool down is a second. Okay, it's not updated. It's cooldown is a second according to me, but uh, according to this. Alright. Interesting. Alright. Now we're in row 5. Crimson v Tempest. Finishing move that slashes all enemies within 10 yards, dealing instant damage and causing your victims to bleed for an additional damage. Deals reduced damage around 8 targets, last longer per combo point. Alright. Alright, we'll grab that for AoE because there's probably an AoE component, but we'll see. Alright, Venom Rush, ambush and mutilate refund fun, 5 energy when used against a poison target. Death Mark, 2 minute cooldown, carve a death mark into an enemy, deal and bleed damage over 20 seconds while mark your garrote, rupture, and lethal poison applied to the target to duplicate a deal and 100% normal damage. Holy shit! That sounds fucking wicked. Master Session, while stealth is active and for 3 seconds after breaking stealth, your crit strike chance is increased by 30%. Okay, well that fits with this over here. Exsanguinate, 45 second cooldown. Twist your blades into the target's wounds, causing your bleed effects to on them to bleed out 100% faster. Jesus Christ. Alright. Alright, if I don't need AoE, I'm, get, I'm not taking that at this point. I'm, I'm t t looking at single target right now. Alright, row six. Flying daggers. Phantom knives radius increase by 15 yards and deals 50% more damage when it strikes five or more targets. Alright, AoE assassination. Venomous, vicious venoms. Uh, ambush and mutilate deal an additional 10% damage as nature. Okay. Lethal dose. Dose. Your weapon poisons nature damage over time and bleed effects do 1% increased damage to targets for each weapon poison nature damage over time and bleed effect on them. Okay. Holy shit, dude. Holy shit. This is going to be insane. Iron wire. Garo well, if it's, if it's tune right. There's just a lot of interplay here. Iron Wire, Garot silences the target for 6 seconds when used from stealth. Enemy silence by Garot deal 15% reduced damage for 8 seconds. Alright. Alright, that's for silencing. Alright, row 7. Systemic failure, Garot increases the damage of ambush and mutilate on the target by 20%. Alright. Amplifying poison. Coats your weapon with a lethal poison, okay? It's a lethal one. Each strike has a 30% chance to poison your enemy, dealing nature damage and applying amplification for 12 seconds. And Venom can consume 10 stacks of amplification to deal 30% increased damage, max 20 seconds. Eh! Twist the knife, and Venom's duration increased by 2 seconds. Alright, I must already got in Venom. Alright. Doom Blade. Mutilate deals an additional 20% bleed damage over 8 seconds. Okay. Alright, it's a bleed damage thing. Alright, I got the AoE. Just in case I need the AoE. Alright, row 8. Ambush and mutilate have a 20% chance to make your next ambush free and usable without stealth. Chance increased to 40% if the target is under 30% health. Okay. Tiny Toxic Blade. Ship deals 500 increased damage and no longer costs energy. Alright. Poison Bomb. And Venom has a 5% chance per combo point spec to smash a vial of poison at the target's location, creating a pool of acidic death that deals nature damage over 2 seconds on all enemies within. Yes, because of the one thing I have over here. Shrouded Suffocation increases Garot damage by 15%. Garot deals two additional combo points. Generates two additional combo points when cast from stealth, okay? 
And then we got, oh, here we go. We got a choice snowed. Sepsis. That's the Night Fae ability. Infect the target's blood, deal in nature damage over 10 seconds. If your target survives this for a duration, they suffer an additional damage, and you gain one use of any stealth ability for 5 seconds. Cooldown reduced by 30 seconds if Sepsis does not last its full duration. Or, Serrated Bone Spike, another Covenant ability. Embed a Bone Spike in the target, deal in physical damage and 85, 875 bleed damage every 2.6 seconds until the target dies or leaves combat. Refunds a charge when target dies. Alright, that's bleed damage, so we're getting Bone Spike. Alright, we're on row 9. Zoldrick's Recipe. Your poisons and bleed deal 10% increased damage to targets below 30%. Holy shit, now I want to get that. Dashing Scoundrel. Venom also increases the critical strike chance of your poisons by 5%, and their critical strike generate 1 energy. Ooh. Scent of Blood. Each enemy affected by your rupture increases your agility by 1% up to a maximum of 15. Interesting. These all take 3? Okay, let's see these capstones. What's up, Tom? Kingsbane. Release a lethal poison from your weapon. It's a 1 minute cooldown. And inject your target, dealing nature damage instantly and additional nature damage over 14 seconds. Each time you apply a lethal poison to a target affected by Kingsbane, Kingsbane damage increased by 15%. Holy shit. Dragon Tempered Blains, you may now apply one additional lethal and non lethal poison to your weapon. How many lethal instant and I'll get deadly? Alright. Scent of blood. Each enemy affected by your rupture. Okay, I already said that. And then this one. Indiscriminate carnage. Your next Garo and your next rupture apply to up to eight enemies within. So, this is so fucking funny. So, the AoE build has to go like this. The single target build's gotta go like this. What the fuck? More poison, I guess? Because to get down here, I would have to use so much. And then I just get... I mean, I might as well get this, actually. Actually, since it is another poison. Shit, I can have that one and that one, and then... um. One extra shiv. Yeah, there we go. Alright, it's something. It's night. Dude. Rogue looks legit fucking amazing, actually. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna be real. I wanna try this multiple poison, so... Wait, where's Deadly? Where's Deadly? Where's Deadly Poison? How did... Does this replace Deadly? Alright, so Rogue's a little still broken, I guess. Okay, my talents just aren't working. Alright, let's see the starter build. Alright, this is the starter build. Alright. 
This is my build. Right? This is mine. My ultimate build. Or not, dude. I broke it. I broke it. I broke it. don't think I don't think it's working right now okay so I can't really test it out but it looks cool all right that that's where I'm gonna leave that okay I cannot apparently um it don't want to activate so we're just gonna we're just gonna move on to subtlety all right I did actually kind of want to try some of the moves, but so this is the starter settled T build. All right. I like some of it. I like some of it. All right. All right. All right. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. Stop. I don't like that. I like like this. I like, yeah, I like that. I like what I did that last time. But is there something I'm missing? See, I kind of went over that way. You know. Why do I need tricks of the trade? What am I, some kind of like person who helps? All right. There we go. That's what I liked. All right, so there's that. Okay. Now, let us reset here. This is interesting. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Subtlety gets to choose between three things at the start? That's new as hell, dude. I haven't seen another class get to choose between three different spells at the start. That's wild. All right, so I got my new, I got my subtlety adjusted over here, the class tree, but let's, let's look at these subtlety. You get a choice. When you hit level 11. It's going to be cool. Okay. So we got improved backstab. Backstab is a 15% increased critical strike chance. When you are behind a target, backstab critical strikes are now also... Expl okay, I think that's I think that's a later thing. So backstab has a 15% increased strike chance. We got shadow step. Hey, Tom, do you know what I say to that? Tank needs to hold aggro better. <laughs> I The tank needs to do more damage. <laughs> do more damage, tank. All right, Shadow Step, you know it, you love it. 
Or improved Shuriken Storm. Naruto, Shuriken Storm, right here. Shuriken Storm has a, an additional 50% chance to create in its critical strike supply. Find weakness for 10 seconds. All right. Oh, let's look at the talent. Or, not the talent. Let's look at the set bonus. All right. Two set. Eviscerate and Black Powder. Increase the damage and critical strike chance of your next backstab, shadow step, shadow strike, or Shuriken Storm. Backstab... Shadow Strike or Shuriken Stone by 2% per combo point spent. And then Force Set, Backstab, Shadow Strike, and Shuriken Storm, Critical Strike. Chance increases the damage of your next Eviscerate or Rupture by 15%. Or your next Black Powder by 8%. Alright. It's pretty straightforward. Just do things. Things are... It's looking like things are tuned fucking buck wild right now, Tom. That's for sure. Alright, Weapon Master. I'm glad they're tuning. I'm glad they're like, hey, we need to focus on tuning. Y'all are doing too much. Alright, so we're at row two now. Look at all the shit Subtlety has. But it's like empty in the middle, so we'll see how this goes. Weapon Master. Shadow Strike and Backstab at 50% chance. 15% chance to hit the target twice each time they deal damage. That sounds good. Abilities cost 15% less energy while Stealth or Shadow Death Dance is active. Okay. Quick decision. Shadow Steps cooldown is reduced by 20% and its maximum range is increased by 20%. Alright, let's get it. Fine. Relentless Strikes. Your finishing moves generate 6 energy per combo point spent. And black powder here. Finishing move that launches explosive black powder at all enemies. All nearby enemies deal in physical damage. Deals reduced damage by next targets. All nearby enemies with your fine weakness suffer an additional 20% shadow damage to shadow. Okay, that's cool. We'll get it. Alright. Row... I really don't know what's going to be good at Subtlety. I have not played Subtlety a lot or know what's going to be good on them. So, I'm kind of just going to vibe through this talent tree. Uh, shot in the dark. After entering Stealth or Shadow Dance, your next cheap shot is free. Okay. Premediation. Premeditation. After entering Stealth, your next Shadow Strike grants up to 10 seconds of Slice and Dice and generates two additional combo points if Slice and Dice is active. All right, Shadow Blades, three minute cooldown. Draw upon the surrounding shadows to empower your weapons, causing your combo point generating abilities to generate one additional combo point and deal 30% additional damage to shadow for 20 seconds. That's cool. That's the cool, that's the Shadow Rogue. This is, why are there a bunch of Seder for, for subtlety? Interesting. I'm looking at the background. Then we got Silent Storm. Gaining Stealth, Vanish, or Shadow Dance causes your next Shuriken Storm to have 100% to have increased chance to critical strike. Okay, that's really good for the set bonus. Shuriken Storm, redu Storm reduces enemies' movements by 50% for 8 seconds. Alright. Alright, now we're moving on to row 4. Gloom Blade replaces Backstab. Puncture your target with your Shadow Infused Blade. This just sounds edgy. I want it. Uh, shadow damage, bypassing armor, critical strikes, apply fine weakness for 10 seconds. Okay. Shadow techniques generates four additional energy. Sounds cool. Stiletto staccato. Shadow technique now also reduces our mini cooldown to shadow blades by one second. All right, I'll take it. Veiled, veil touched. Your abilities deal 8% increased magic damage. Okay. Secret technique. Ooh. 45 second cooldown. Finishing move that creates shadow clones of yourself? Oh my god, you're a fucking ninja. What is your nindo way? That is the true question. It, you have to go like this when you do this move. You have to do the fucking Naruto shit. Summon your, summon your shadow clones. Each perform a piercing attack on un enemies near your target, dealing physical damage to the... I'm gonna get a fucking shadow clone. Alright. I, I seriously gotta get shadow clones. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me with this? 
Okay. All right. Row five. Symbols of death has five percent reduced cooldown. Okay. Act. Okay, we got a choice note over here. First one for subtlety. Activating shadow dance generates four combo points, or that's called the first dance. That's funny. Or master of shadows gain twenty-five energy over three seconds when you enter stealth or activate shadow dance. All right, I'll take the energy. Deepening shadows. Is this a shadow priest or a rogue? Deepening Shadows, your your finishing moves reduces the main cooldown on Shadow Dance by one second per combo point spent. R Replicating Shadows, Rupture deals an additional 30% damage to Shadow and applies to one additional enemy within 8 yards. Alright, we're going Shadow Rogue, fuck it, fuck it, dude. I'm going Shadow Rogue. I'm going fucking Shadow Rogue. We Shadow Rogue, dude. I'm gonna focus on fucking Shadow Clone Jutsu. We don't need an increased rank. I'm trying to trim it up for maximum shadow power. All right, we're on row six. Shrouded in darkness. Shroud of concealment increases the movement speed of all party and raid members within its rate. That's cool as fuck, dude. What? That's awesome. Dude, shroud gives you movement speed. That's great. Plan execution, symbols of death, increases your crit strike chance by five seconds. By 5%, not by five seconds. Improve Shadow Dance. Shadow Dance has a one second increased duration. Okay. Shadowed Finishers. Eviscerate and Black Pattern deal an additional 20% damage to Shadow to targets with your fine weakness. Okay. Shuriken Tornado. Focus intently. Then release one minute cooldown. A Shuriken Storm every second for the next four seconds. I, want, I just want to see it, dude. I just want to see it. I hope that's implemented. I literally just want to see it. All right, row seven, here we go. Inevitability. Backstab and Shadow Strike extend the duration of your symbols of death by 0.5 seconds. Without a trace, Vanish has one additional cooldown, or additional charge, additional cooldown. It, you have to do another cooldown. All right, choice node. Vanish grants you a shield for six seconds of dormant damage equal to 30% of your max health, okay. Or, Movement speed is increased by 20% and damage taken reduced by 10% for 8 seconds after gaining stealth, vanish, or shadow dance. Oh wait, that, that sounds cool. Secret stratagem. Gain one additional max combo point. Your finishing moves that consume more than 5 combo points have increased effect and your finishing move deals 5% increased damage. Okay. Alright, now we're in row 8. Sepsis. Infect the target's blood deal in nature damage over 10 seconds. Night Fae ability. Seen it before. If the target survives its full duration, they suffer more damage, and you gain one use of any stealth ability for five seconds cooldown. It's reduced by 30 seconds of sepsis does not last its full duration. Perforated Vein. Shadow Strike increases the damage of your next backstab by 20%. Max five stacks. Dark Shadow. Shadow Dance increases damage by an additional 15%. Deeper Daggers. Eviscerate and Black Powder increase your shadow damage dealt by 10% for eight seconds. Flangulation. Lash the target for shadow damage caused on each combo point spent within 12 seconds to last for an additional damage. Dealing damage with flangulation. Increase your mastery by 2.5%, persisting for 12 seconds after torment fades. It's shadow damage, I want it. Alright. Row 9. Invigorated Shadow Dust. Vanish reduces the remaining cooldown of your other rogue abilities by 10, 10 seconds. That's cool. Lingering Shadow. After Shadow Dance ends, Backstab deals an additional 50% of Shadow Fading to by 2.8%. Uh, 2 Finality. Eviscerate, Rupture, and Black Powder increase the damage of your next use of the same finishing move by 15% in the last 12 seconds. Alright, and then we got the Capstones. The Rotten. After activating Symbols of Death, your next Shadow Dance or Backstab deals 50% increased damage, generating 4 additional combo points and is guaranteed to critically strike. Dance? Dance? 
I think this is supposed to be Dance Macabre. Shadow Dance increases the damage of your attacks that generator spend combo points by 10%, increased by an additional 10% for each different attack you use bonus resets when attack is repeated. That's cool. Dark Brew. Your attacks to deal nature or bleed damage now do shadow instead. Shadow damage. Okay. Okay. Alright. I'm the Shadow Rogue. Alright. This is the Shadow Rogue. Look. This is the Shadow Rogue. I am the Shadow Rogue. It is my Nindo way. Alright, I'm popping the fuck out of this move. Let's go. Fucking Shuriken Tornado! Let's go! Oh my god, that was amazing. Worth. I can't attack that. Alright, I need combo points. I need to use my fucking ninja. I can't attack that. Why can't I talk that? Ugh. I wanna summon my shadow clones, dude. I can't attack that target. It's fucking sad. Here, I wanna I wanna I wanna see what my shadow clones look like. Let's do it. Let's see what my shadow clone looks like. It's gonna be worth, let me tell you. Alright, there's gonna be a billion people over here though. Let's see what the shadow clone looks like. Alright. Oh my god, I see them! Barely! Oh my god, that looks so cool. Alright. And I got my Nindo Blaster. That's fucking sweet, dude. Alright, so now... It's time for the spec that I know a lot better than the other rogue specs. Combat. Outlaw. Cause I'm a fucking outlaw. All right, we're gonna roll the bones. Okay, we're gonna be a wild card. All right, see, this has them get echoing re re uh, reprimand, which I agree with. All right, good. We lose that. We don't get that. Looks good. I may not want gouge. I could get tricks if I want, or something over here. But, uh, shit. I'll keep it. I'll keep this. I kind of like it. It's all right. Here, this is what I'll do. Watch. I just think this is better, dude. I think a tropic poison is just better. Let's just switch it, clear up my bars. All right. Dude, what is up with rogues getting a choice? Do other classes get a choice? Holy shit. All right, so we're at outlaw. I got my new outlaw class side. We're going echo, I mean, rep reprimand, which is cool. It'll be my first time playing with it, which would be nice and fun. And uh, let's get started. So we got opportunity. Sinister Strike has a 35% chance to hit an additional time, making your next special stop half cost and double damage. Blade Flurry. 30 second cooldown. Strike up to eight nearby targets. Still target capped. Still target capped. Causes your single target attacks to also strike up to seven additional enemies for 50% of the normal damage for 13 seconds. All right, well, we'll get both. Grappling hook, launch a grappling hook and pull yourself to the target location. All right, 
Weapon Master Sinister Strike has a 15 or 15, 5% increased chance to strike an additional time. Okay. Combat potency increases your energy regeneration by 20%. I'm taking that. Ambidextrous Mangos has a, an additional 5% chance to strike while Blade Fury is active. Hit and run movement speed increased by 5%. I do love that. All right. Row four, or row three. Retractable hook, reduces the cooldown of grappling hook by 15 seconds and increases your retraction speed. That's cool. Combat stamina, stamina increased by 10%, I like that. Adrenaline rush, increases your energy regeneration by 60%, your maximum energy by 50, and your attack speed by 20% for 20 seconds. That's the big, that's that's the good juicy uh, outlaw cooldown right there. Repost, or be repost. Dodging attack will trigger Mastery Mangosh and its effect may only occur once every one second. Or Death Maneuvers increase the range of your melee attacks by two yards while Blade Fury is active. That sucks. Alright, we'll get that. Alright, now we're in row four. Blinding powder reduces the cooldown of blind by 30 seconds and increases the range by five yards. Ruthlessness. Your finishing moves have a 20% chance per combo point spent to grant grant a combo point, okay? Swift Slasher. Slice and Dice grants an additional 2% attack speed per combo point spent. Restless Blades. Finishing moves reduces the remaining cooldown of many rogue skills by one second per combo point spent. Effective skills of general Okay. Whole ton of them. Let me just run down the list. Adrenaline Rush. Between the eyes. Blade Fury. Blade Rush. Dread Blades. Ghost to Strike. Grappling Hook. Keep it rolling. Killing Spree. Mark for Death. Roll with the Bone. Sepsis. Sprint and Vanish. Everything. Fatal Flourish. Your offhand attacks have a 60% chance to generate 10, 10 energy. Improved Between the Eyes. Critical Strike Chance with Between the Eyes deal 4 times normal damage. Yeah, I did want to get that. Alright. I don't know if I want to get that right now. Okay. Dirty Tricks, Cheap Shot, Gouge, and Sap no longer cost energy. That's cool. Maybe. Row 5. Heavy Hitter, attacks that generate combo points deal 10% increased damage. Devious Stratagem, gain gain one additional com max combo point in your finishing moves that consume more than 5 combo points have increased effects in your finishing moves deal 5% increased damage. Alright. Roll the bones, roll the dice of fate, providing a random combat enhancement for 30 seconds. There you go. Quick draw, half cost use of pistol shot, grant sinister strike, grants it by sinister strike, now generate one additional combo point and deal 20% additional damage. Ace up your sleeves, between the eyes has a 4% chance for a combo point to spent to grant four combo points, all right? Now we're in row six, audacity. Half cost uses of pistol shot have a 35% chance to cause your next ambush to be usable without stealth. Chance to trigger this effect matches the chance for your sinister strike to strike an additional time. Alright. Loaded dice. Activating a general in rush causes your next roll of dice to grant at least two matches. I do like that. Float like a butterfly. Relis rent Restless blaze now also reduces the remaining cooldown of evasion and feint by 0.5 seconds per combo point spent. Sleight of hand, roll the bones has a 10% increased chance of granting additional ma matches. I do like me some roll the bones. Dancing still, Blade Fury strikes three additional enemies and its duration is increased by three seconds. Oh shit, you have to pay. Soon they're gonna charge for Blade Fury to have more targets. A dollar per target. That's what they're gonna do. One dollar, one gold for the rogue one additional target. Rogues have to pay gold to hit more targets. Is that what you want, Blizzard? Pay to win? Blade fl Flurry? Alright. Row 7, Triple Threat. Sinister Strike has a 10% chance to strike with both weapons after it strikes an additional time. Count the odds. Ambush and Disp Dispatch have a 10% chance to grant you a roll to boat. Bones combat enhancement buff you do not already have for 5 seconds duration and chance doubled while stealth. Okay. Improved Mangosh. Mangosh has an additional 5% chance to strike. 
All right, let's get that. All right, choice note over here. Sepsis. Infect the target's blood, dealing nature damage over 10 seconds. If the target survives full duration, they suffer an additional nature damage. You gain one use of stealth ability for 5 seconds. Cooldown reduced 30 seconds if sepsis does not last full duration. Wards a combo point, 1.5 minute cooldown. It eh. Or, Ghostly Strike. Strike an enemy, dealing physical damage and causing the target to take 10% increased damage from your abilities for 10 seconds. That one I use a lot more, bro. Let's see what the other stuff is. Blade Rush. Charge your enemy. Charge your target with blades out. Deal in physical damage to target and all other nearby enemies. While Blade Fear is active, damage to the non-primary target is increased by percent. All right, let's get Ghostly Strike. All right. Improved adre Adrenaline Rush. Generate full combo points when you gain Adrenaline Rush and again when it ends. That's cool as hell. We got a choice note over here. Of stuff I like here. Two minute cooldown, killing spree. Teleport to an enemy of 10, 10 yards, attacking with both weapons for a total of 26k physical damage over two seconds. While Blade Fury is active, also hit up to four nearby targets for 100% damage. Killing spree. Gotta love it. Or Dread Blades. Two minute cooldown, strike an enemy, dealing physical damage and empowering your weapon for 10 seconds, causing your sinister strike, ambush, and pistol shot to fill your combo points. Where your finishing moves consume 5% of your current health. What? Oh. That was weird. Sorry. Alright. And then... Precise cuts. Blade Fury damage increased by an additional 3% per missing target. Per missing target below its maximum? They really doing something with Blade Fury and Rogues. Alright. Row 9. Take them by surprise. Haste increased by 10% while stealth and for 10 seconds after leaving stealth. That's interesting. Summarily dispatched. When your dispatch consumes 5 more combo points. Consumes 5 or more combo points. Each dispatch deals 5% increased, increased damage and costs 5 less energy for 8 seconds. Max seven stacks. Adding a stack does not refresh the duration. <clears throat> All right. So we're just mashing dispatch, I guess. Fan the hammer. When a sinister strike strikes an additional time, gain one additional stack of opportunity. Max its stacks. Half cost uses. A pistol shot consume one additional stack of opportunity to fire additional shot. Okay. It's like a gun build. The gun the gun outlaw rogue. Where you just like Alright, capstones. Hidden opportunity effects that grant a chance for sinister strike to strike an additional time off so apply to ambush. Okay. Keep it rolling. Increase the remaining duration of your active rollable combat effects for by thirty seconds. Seven minute cooldown. That's fucking wild. Green skin. Like, I don't even know if that's good, dude. That's a long ass cooldown. Green skin wickers. Between the eyes, a 20% chance per combo point to increase the damage of your next pistol shot by 20%. Alright, let's look at this tier set. I forgot to. Alright, okay, it's dispatch. Dispatch increases the damage of your next initial striker ambush by 20% per combo point spent. In the four set half cost use of pistol shot granted by Sinister Strike increase the damage of your next dispatch. Okay, okay, okay. So I do still want some of these to trigger. So what do we do here? I don't want that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Do we go audacity? Or do you do this? I 
think we go that. Get killing spree. And then... That. None of these cats... I'm gonna be legit. We need this one, actually. With the tier set, we need this one. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Where was I getting other stuff from? And then... There we go. See? I couldn't undo that. All right. All right. Wait, that's not what I took. That's what I took. Wait, that's not what I took either. Oh my god, it fucked it up. It fucked it up. What else is fucked up? That's wrong. What else? What else? That's wrong. There we go! There we go. Now this is the build. This is my outlaw build, yo. It's fucking badass. Let me tell you. It has some shooting. It has some rolling the bones. It has some mango. It has a little echoing, rec echoing, echoing reprimand, reprimand. I can't talk, dude. Some juicy rogue stuff. Dude, see, this is why Outlaw is the best, dude. Outlaw has fucking Edwin Van Cleef. MVP rogue over here, dude. Was not wrong, dude. He was not wrong. Edward Van Cleef was right. Anyways, that's been rogue. With tear. Looking good. Clearly some stuff not done on it. But that may or may not be the last look I take at rogue. Either way, I'm excited to play it on live, make some builds. Still subject to tuning. Who knows what will be good. The talents look fun. They do look fun. To me. <laughs>